Hello everyone, welcome back to Blackbird Studio. In this video, I'll show you how to make this distorting ball effect in Blender. So in Blender, first thing you need to do is delete the cube and shift A and add an icosphere and increase the amount of subdivisions to five. Also, we're gonna add a subdivision surface. And we're not gonna use that for now, so increase the viewport um, subdivision to zero and add a, a displace modifier and a new texture and you'll be able to find this texture in the textures tab and change the type to marble and it gives us this crazy shape here um, we want to change the noise basis to Ronai F1. And it just gives us a different noise, makes it look different basically. Um, this is a little too strong, so we need to decrease strength. 0.1 or 0.2. I'm going to do 0.1. Now for the um, the size, increase that to 2, and this will just change the size of the texture, you can see if I decrease it and increase it, the size changes. Um, the depth, we can keep it 2, and the turbulence, we're actually going to animate this. And if we just drag the turbulence all the way up. Gives us some really cool effects. So for now, I'll keep that at zero. And we're going to increase the viewport of our subdivisions to so two now. Make it. And also select it and shape smooth. You can't really notice much of a difference. Oh, there is one. So. Now we need to animate the turbulence. So set it at zero. And go to the front for the start of your animation and hover over turbulence and press I. And go to the end. And increase this. Something like uh, 100. Looks pretty good. Maybe 200. 150. Okay, that works. And press I again. And now, as you can see, it animates really well. And if you play this back, it might be a bit slow. And if it's really slow, go to your modifiers tab and just decrease the subdivisions. And when we render this out, we're going to render the subdivisions at like 4. Maybe even 5. Okay, there we go. Now it's a bit smoother. Just gonna pause that. So now we need to add the camera. And to do this, we're gonna uh, make the camera rotate around this the ball. So we're gonna add an empty plane axis. Shift A, empty plane axis. I'll scale it up so that you can see the axes. And also Course, add a camera and on the camera press alt first go to, into wireframe mode and press alt a or sorry alt r and alt g clear the rotation and the location and rotate it on the x axis 90 degrees and 
move it back on your y axis. Press GY, and we can delete this camera up here and delete the light. And I'm going to move the camera back even more so that the whole ball can be in the frame. Okay, so select the empty and then select the camera. Press Ctrl P and set parent to object. And now if we, we select the, the empty and rotate it, then I'll rotate the camera as well. So you want to animate this. Go to your first frame, press I and rotation, and then rotate it. Press R, Z, and 360. So rotate it 360 degrees. Actually, first we need to go to the end. Press R, Z, 360. Press I and rotation. And now it'll rotate around. So press zero to go into the camera. And then if you start playing it, it's actually rotating around. You might not be able to see it, but it gives a gives a cool effect. And also you can see up here that it's changing. So if we if we press seven to look at it from the top, the camera like speeds up around here, and then it gets slower at the end. And we don't want that. We want it to keep on going at a constant pace. So now if I go to the animation tab and select the empty and select all these keyframes. So now if we go to key interpolation mode and linear. It will go at the same pace all the way around, and it won't slow down or speed up. And if we go back and to the layout and play it, it looks pretty good, but we do need to increase the photo movement. But it looks way better when the, the subdivisions are. So now that we're done with the distortion and animation, we can start shading it. So go to the shading tab and make a new material. And we need a a wave wave texture. I search for wave texture. Drag that in. For the right color we want to make this red. Now we need to add a Hue and saturation node. We're going to animate this hue, but for now, we'll just drag in the color to the base color. Not a wall. Now I'm going to decrease the scale, the texture, so there's less rings. You need to add distortion, of course. And also, we want to change the detail. Increase that a little bit. So now, if we increase the phase offset, the waves will move around, and we'll be animating this. So we also want to animate the hue and saturation, and if we drag this, it'll go from blue. We also want to change the metallic. This. I want to increase that. Increase or. Just mess with these values. Maybe decrease the roughness a little bit. I'm 
not something pretty good. So I want to animate this. So go to lay layout, go to the very start, the animation, and go back to shading. And press I on hue. Over here, press I. And also press I on phase offset. And then the end. Increase the hue to 1. Press I. Increase the phase offset to something like 20. Press I on that as well. If we go back to the layout, and decrease the viewport subdivisions, so it's smoother. Now you can see that we get this cool wavy effect. Now before we render it out, we need to change the background color, and we also need to add a light. So first I'll change the background color, so I'll go to the shading workspace, and I'll change it from object to world over here, and on the background, set the strength to zero. And then if we go back to layout and go to the render engine, it'll be completely black. And now we can't see anything really, so we need our light. Shift A, light, and area light. If we go back to render, move it up. Scale it a little bit. And then I go to the light properties and increase the power a lot. Also scale it up. Now if we go back to solid shading, rotate it on the y axis, or sorry, on the x axis, rx90, like this, and then alt g, to it back to the center, and then move it on the y, like this, so it looks like that, and we also want this to rotate with the camera, so select the light first, then the empty. Now we can rotate it. And now the light rotates with the camera. Great. Right now it doesn't look very good when you play it. That's because we need to render it out. And when we render it out, it will look much better. Just going to increase the power. And you can also change the color. Last thing we need to do is render it out. And so go to the camera icon, the render properties, and change your render engine to cycles. And increase the render sampling so you don't have to see these, um, these dots. I'm going to do like 10 times more. I'm not sure if your computer can handle that, but you can. And also go to the um, output properties. And you might want to increase your frame rate. Right now, if it's kind of slow, in your opinion, then you can increase it to 60. It'll go much faster. I'm going to keep it at 24, I like that speed, and also you need to go back to the modifier and increase the for it. subdivisions to 4, or maybe even 5, do the same for the runner. Okay, great.
really slow, so I'm just gonna change the default back to zero. So it doesn't really matter. Once we render it, it'll be a five subdivision. Go back to the output properties and we do keep the file format at PNG. And you just keep all these settings. It should work fine. You can also select where you want it to save. Now if we go to render, and then render animation. Right now I can already tell that the render samples too much. I could try that again. Now rendering it in cycles could take a really long time. Um, so I'm also going to show you how fast it would be in EV. I'm just going to stop that, go to EV, and then I'll start rendering it. And this is much faster, but the quality isn't as good. If you go to the place that you saved your render, you'll notice that all these are showing up as individual image files. And at the end I'll show you how to make them into all one video file. Once you have 250 image files, because that's how long our animation timeline is, then we can um, go back to Blender and Change the editor type to the video sequencer. And now we need to add, or also press Shift A, and add an image sequence. And now go to um, saved all the image files, and then press Control A, or A actually, select everything, and then add image strip. This will add the image strip. And we need to move it one frame to the right. I'm not sure why it won't start there. And now, if we go to our output properties and change the file format to FFmpeg video, now if we render this out, it won't take as long to render. It'll be really fast. It'll look really cool. Alright, so now it finished rendering, and if we go back to where I saved it, it'll make a video file. If we play it back, it'll look like this. And that'll be it for this video. If you liked it, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!